Hello everyone, Dr. Polaris here. Without a doubt, the kangaroos of the family Macropodidae are Australia's most iconic animals, often serving as a symbol for the country itself in international media. Indeed, due to their frequent appearances in books, cartoons and TV shows, kangaroos have become quite a familiar element of popular culture, to the point where it's easy to forget just what unique and incredible animals they are. Aside from humans, macropods are the only habitually bipedal terrestrial modern mammals, and move not by running, but by famously through energy efficient hopping, allowing them to cover long distances at speed. With superficially deer-like heads, elongated feet, and, and muscular tails that can act like a fifth limb, kangaroos and relatives are truly one of a kind. Like most Australian marsupials, macropodoids have a fossil record that extends back to the late Oligocene, although genetic testing has suggested that all modern lineages derive from a common ancestor that lived during the late Eocene circa 34 to 38 million years ago. As predominantly herbivorous animals, macropods are members of Diprotodontia, a successful clade of marsupials that includes the wombats, koalas and possums, plus a diversity of extinct groups. Diprotodonts are united by the possession of large forward-pointing incisors on the lower jaw and a condition known as syntodactyly, wherein the second and third toes of the foot are fused up to the claws. This feature likely evolved as a means to aid in climbing, which suggests that the ancestors of all Diprotodontians were small arboreal animals, similar to modern pygmy possums. As macropods evolved, they became better adapted for life on the tropical forest floor of Oligocene and Miocene Australia, developing elongated feet in aid of a hopping mode of locomotion. This makes the evolution of modern tree kangaroos rather convoluted, with ancestral macropods being arboreal, then becoming more terrestrial, and then switching back to arboreal habits again. Although many modern roos are inhabitants of open environments, the early history of the group began in the tropical forests that once covered most of Australia, from the Paleocene to the second half of the Miocene. The most basal lineage of macropods so far known were the Balbarids, a family of omnivorous quadrupedal animals that would have looked more like modern brush-tailed possums than kangaroos or wallabies. They were probably not capable of hopping, and would have moved about on all fours, with the structure of their limbs suggesting that they were good climbers. One genus, Balbaru possessed greatly elongated upper canines which formed fangs, which were probably utilised for intraspecies combat, which led to the animal receiving the nickname Fangaroo. It was about the size of a cat and was native to the famous early Miocene deposits at Riversley, Queensland, between 23 and 16 million years ago. Balbarids died out during the Middle Miocene, probably as a result of the aridification of Australia that was rapidly spreading at this time. Meanwhile, the most basal of all modern macropods is the last of its kind, with this being the musky rat kangaroo of the genus Hypsi Primnodon. As its name suggests, this is a superficially rat-like animal with dark brown fur and a long naked tail. It is the smallest of all modern macropods, with little sexual dimorphism, as both males and females weigh about 500 grams on average. Unlike the larger, more derived macropods, Musky rat kangaroos are omnivorous creatures that feed on fruit, fungi, and a variety of insects and invertebrates that are found on the forest floor. Active mostly during the day, these animals possess a quadrupedal hopping gait, more similar to a rabbit than a kangaroo, and are known to release a musky odour when threatened. In modern times, only one species, Hypsiprimidon moshatus, remains in the tropical rainforests of northeastern Australia. Although the genus is actually quite old, first appearing during the early Miocene at Riversley roughly 23 million years ago, it belongs to the broader family Hypsiprimnodontidae, which was significantly more diverse during the Miocene. The extinct subfamily Propaleopinae were notably larger than the modern rat kangaroos, although were still omnivorous in nature. In fact, the late Oligocene and Miocene genus Echaltodata may have been predominantly carnivorous, about the size of a small dog, and weighing between 5 and 10 kilograms, this genus possessed both sharp and pointed lower incisors, alongside buzzsaw-like premolars that were useful for slicing through meat. Although probably omnivorous, Echaltodata would not have passed up the opportunity to feed on small prey, such as lizards, snakes, and grounded birds. 
leaping on top of them and holding them in place with its forelimbs while delivering the killer bite. The closely related genus Propaleopus was a similar animal and lived from the Pliocene to the Pleistocene between 4.3 million and 55,000 years ago. Larger than Echaltodata and weighing up to 70 kilograms or 150 pounds, this genus was also omnivorous, but almost certainly included some meat in its diet. A more derived family of macropods are the Potteruids, which contain the modern Potteroos and Betongs. These are small rabbit-sized animals that resemble rodents or very small wallabies, and feed largely on fruits and fungi. Their hind feet are elongated, and they move by hopping, although the adaptations for this are not as extreme as they are in true wallabies and kangaroos. The oldest known form from the fossil record was the genus Paleopotterus from the late Oligocene, and it has been suggested that all more derived macropods evolved from ancestors such as this. There are three modern genera, which include the rufous rat kangaroo Apiprimnus, which is the largest potteruid and is native to northeastern Australia, the rare betongs of the genus Betongia, which were heavily affected by European colonisation of Australia, and the three species of potteroo in the genus Potterus. The latter are generally quite small and gerbil-like animals that were once incredibly common across the continent, but are now highly restricted in range, having declined drastically due to agricultural practices and the introduction of cats and foxes. The final and most derived family of macropods are the Macropodidae, which probably originated in the late Oligocene about 28 million years ago although identifiable fossils from this time are rare. The most basal living macropodid is the genus Lagostrophus, also known as the banded hair wallaby. A small animal weighing about 1.7 kilograms, the genus possesses sandy brown fur with dark stripes running horizontally along the back and rump, a superficially similar coat pattern to the famous extinct thylacine. Once found across the southwestern Australian mainland, Lagostrophus is now restricted to Bernier Island and Dora Island off Western Australia. It belongs to the subfamily Lagostrophinae, which diverged from other macropodids during the early Miocene about 20 million years ago, and gives us a good idea of what ancestral members of the family would have looked like. In a slightly more derived position were a subfamily that is now entirely extinct, with these being the short-faced kangaroos of Stenurinae. Unlike modern macropodids, which hop either bipedally or quadrupedally, Stenurines seem to have abandoned saltation as a means of locomotion. Their comparatively inflexible spines, robust hind limb and pelvic elements, and the lack of capacity for rapid hopping, suggest that these animals walked bipedally somewhat like humans, even converging with these primates in details of their pelvic anatomy. Furthermore, their hoofed single digits and metatarsal anatomy suggest that unlike their plantigrade relatives, Stenurines were digitigrade, walking on the tips of their toes. The short, robust skull of Stenurines is considered to be indicative that they were browsers that fed on leaves. Some species may have been able to reach above their heads and grasp branches with their semi-opposable paws. By far the most well-known of these animals was the genus Procoptodon, which was native to South Australia and New South Wales during the Pleistocene. Many species have been placed within this genus, with these varying a great deal in terms of size, with P. gilli standing a mere 1 metre or 3 feet 3 inches tall. However, the largest species was the massive Procoptodon gulia, which potentially stood up to 2 metres or 6 feet 6 inches tall and weighed in the region of 440 to 530 pounds. With its bipedal walking stance and forward-facing eyes, I can only imagine how uncanny and strange this animal must have seemed to the first Aboriginal peoples that encountered it in the wild. P. Goliath became extinct roughly 45,000 years ago, alongside many other Australian megafaunal mammals, for reasons that are still debated. Both climate change and human hunting have been posited as explanations, although recent studies have lent more towards environmental change and degradation being more important. Given that Procoptodon would have been a tall, slow-moving animal that inhabited open shrubland habitats, it was probably highly visible to human hunters, and would not have been able to flee as other macropods do when confronted. Regardless, it and all other Stenurines died out before the end of the Pleistocene, leaving only the living subfamily Macropodinae to hop on into the Holocene. This lineage contains the familiar modern kangaroos and wallabies, 
as well as a variety of smaller species. They are estimated to have diverged from the Stenurines about 15 million years ago, and originated as modestly sized browsers with relatively low crowned molars. However, the common ancestor of all living forms is projected to have existed roughly 10 million years ago, and would have been similar to the living genus Dorcopsis, which is endemic to New Guinea. These are largely forest-dwelling macropods with diets composed mostly of leaves, fruits and fungi, being represented by four species. They seem to have originated on mainland Australia during the early Pliocene, although they became extinct there probably due to a redification of their preferred habitats. Another basal macropodine is the ever-smiling quokka of the genus Cetonyx. These cute little herbivores are only native to coastal southwestern Australia, being particularly common on offshore islands away from introduced predators. A more derived and far more unusual group of macropodines are the tree kangaroos, which have adapted to a largely arboreal mode of existence. Possessing greatly elongated tails for balance, broad hind feet with sharp gripping claws and furry coats, these animals are pretty cute, resembling living plush toys. While slow and clumsy on the ground, they are highly agile in the tree canopy and are capable of leaping distances of up to 30 feet. Tree kangaroos feed mostly on leaves and fruit, but will also eat nuts, tree sap and bark. Up to 14 species have been described, with all of these being members of a single genus, Dendrolagus. The majority of these are native to New Guinea, with only two species, D. lumholtzi and D. benetianus, being present on mainland Australia. The closest relatives of these specialised roos appear to be the rock wallabies of the genus Petragale, which are also quite adept climbers. Within Macropodinae, the most common and diverse clade are the Macropodini, which contains the familiar kangaroos and wallabies. The most basal of these is the swamp wallaby of the genus Wallabia, which is native to the eastern coastline of Australia, and prefers woodland habitats with a dense understory. The pedomelons are quite similar animals, and also prefer either temperate, subtropical or tropical forested environments, which is probably ancestral for members of Macropodini, with adaptations for dwelling in more arid open environments only appearing relatively recently in Rue evolution. This trend was accompanied by increasing size, a typical example would be members of the genus Macropus, commonly known as the Eastern Grey Kangaroo. This animal is the second largest and heaviest living marsupial and native land mammal in Australia. An adult male will commonly weigh about 50 to 66 kilograms or up to 146 pounds, whereas females commonly weigh around 17 to 40 kilograms or up to 88 pounds. This prominent sexual dimorphism is common in the most derived macropods, which tend to live in social groups wherein males fight for access to females. Although the red kangaroo is better known, the Eastern Grey is the kangaroo most often encountered in Australia due to its adaptability. Few Australians visit the arid interior of the continent, while many live in and around the major cities of the southern and eastern coast, where greys can quite readily be observed feeding in parks or on golf courses. Interestingly, an extinct and currently unnamed species of Macropus from Pleistocene Eastern Australia was the largest macropod to ever live standing up to 10 feet tall and weighing 270 kilograms. The largest macropod, and indeed the most massive native Australian mammal in modern times, is the red kangaroo, which was once placed in the genus Macropus. However, in 2019, a reassessment of macropod phylogeny found that this species belonged in the newly erected genus Osfranta. Four species are present here, with two of these possessing restricted ranges in the north of the continent. These are the black wallaroo and the large antilopine kangaroo. Meanwhile, the common wallaroo is found across most of Australia, and as its name suggests, is one of the most common macropods. The last and most iconic species of Osfranta is the red kangaroo, an arid adapted form that displays very strong sexual dimorphism, with males possessing a reddish coat colour, while the females are greyish and weigh only half as much. Large mature males can stand more than 1.8 metres or 5.9 feet tall, with the largest confirmed individual having been around 2.1 metres or 6 feet 11 inches tall and weighed 91 kilograms or 201 pounds. They are capable of bounding at up to 38 miles per hour and can cover distances of up to 30 feet in a single hop while moving at speed, making them incredibly efficient travellers. Generally crepuscular, like many macropods, 
red kangaroos are grazers that feed on grasses and forbs, blessing high-crowned molars for grinding tough vegetation. Adults are relatively immune from predation, aside from humans and saltwater crocodiles, with the roos being capable of fending off dingoes by kicking or by retreating into rivers and billabongs. Males will sometimes view humans as a threat, given that they are of roughly similar size and posture to rivals, while humans in turn find the vaguely anthropomorphic appearance of kangaroos charming, so much so that they have become iconic representations of Australia itself. The macropods then are a fascinating lineage of marsupials, whose evolution chronicles the shifting environmental and climatic state of their home continent. Developing from arboreal, possum-like ancestors when tropical forests covered most of Australia, these animals adapted well to life on the ground, and would even return to the trees during the Pliocene. Their bipedal hopping locomotion was well suited to the open savanna and bushland that spread during the late Miocene aided by the fact that Australia is also the world's flattest continent. These changes brought larger sizes and the ability to feed on grasses. Although sadly, the arrival of Europeans and mass agriculture would severely reduce the range of many macropods, with numerous species now being rare and threatened. Let's hope that conservation efforts can help mitigate these losses, so that these iconic animals can bound successfully into the future. Thanks for watching everyone. The next episode will be covering the early history of the Sauropterygians, so until then I'll see you again soon. Cheerio!